Um, but we've got one last uh, present, uh, presentation. Um, so we have Neil Beller. And Neil uh, is going to talk about your driving is driving me crazy. So Neil has been a resident of Carroll County for 25 years. He is the author of four published books, a father of two grown daughters, and a longtime producer through Kit and Caboodle Productions. With a background in television production that spans from Hollywood to Carroll County, Neil brings a unique mix of humor and experience. When he's not behind the camera, you might find him making batches of pepper jelly and volcano salsa. So, please help welcome to the stage, Neil Beller, everyone. I just want to real quick um, thank somebody. The, um, five years ago, I was turned on to Ignite. This is my fifth time. I'm going to get a dinner jacket, I hear. And, um, and the person who uh, turned me on to this was uh, like the female Mr. Rogers of the neighborhood, and that's Katie Townsley. So I just wanted to uh, thank Katie for, uh, for uh, doing that. And I wanted to apologize to uh, Andrea, who was um, up here with her kumbaya about flipping people off, because I flipped three people off on the way here. <laughs> so just wanted to share that with everybody. Um, and I'm ready. Several years ago, I published a book which discussed all the things that drove me crazy about driving. Well, it's pretty obvious that none of you read my book because you are still pissing me off. So I'm going to take some time to educate you. There is no question that my world revolves around me. Some of you think your world revolves around you. You would be wrong. Another thing you don't know is that every car comes equipped with this magical stick which bolts right onto your steering wheel. It's called a turn signal, moron. When you push it up or down, magic occurs and a light will start blinking on the outside of your vehicle letting people know your intentions. Some of you seem to think that in order to use it, you need to physically be making the turn before you launch the blinking mechanism. Thousands of minutes of my life have been wasted waiting to find out if you're going to turn in front of me or not. My frustration isn't limited to the turn signal. Oh no, there are plenty more things you need to learn. Like the difference between yield, merge, and stop. When turning right onto 140 from 191, why in the hell would you ever stop? You have your own lane. Turn the corner, speed up, and merge into traffic. Same thing at 32 and 26, just like the Beltway. Stay in your lane and merge when you can. Stopping completely like I see every day only holds everybody else. People have places to go and need time to get there, like the drive through to get money. Have you ever noticed that at a bank drive through people have completely lost the ability to use their left arm? <laughs> they have to open their door and lean through the window to push with their right hand. My God, just push the button with your left hand. You're not knitting a sweater. And speaking of the bank drive through if there are two lanes and you want to tell her, use the outside lane. That way the person behind you, me, doesn't have to wait to use the ATM. Especially when it's raining, I don't want to park, get out of my car and walk to the ATM because you are a nut job. I think it's time for everyone to start being more considerate to their fellow drive through users. After ordering your food, pull far enough ahead so the person behind you can order. I hate being a bumper away because you don't know the footprint of your car. Also, please know that as long as you're behind the car next to you, you can turn the corner. You, don't, you can pull past them when there are two lanes. I had a lady next to me wetting her pants because I pulled up next to her. I have seen people sit there with three car lengths in front of them. Stop it! Pull forward. Pull up so the person behind you can order and then zipper in at the turn. When I'm behind these people, I sit in my car, look behind me and yell, Hey idiot, pull the hell up! When they look up and see me looking backward, they obviously know it was not me who yelled. <laughs> By the way, when you're in your car, you're allowed to yell pretty much anything and to anyone. It is called the freedom scream, and by Beller Law, you can use every cuss phrase ever invented, and some you make up on the spot, like pigeon-toed butt licker. 
However, your horn is your best friend. I really wish today's technology it could be Wi-Fi. Let me explain. You're in the left turn lane, three cars back, the light changes, and the guy in the front just sits there. You hit the horn and the guy in front of you gets all pissed off yelling, it's not me. Well, no shit, it's the guy in front of you. Can you imagine being able to transport your horn to the interior of the first guy's car? First he would yell crap and then he would do it. I think it's a doable thing. So I'm getting some tech council friends to start working on a Wi-Fi horn pronto. Please know my beef isn't always with other drivers. Sometimes pedestrians initiate the freedom scream as well. How many of you do this? When leaving a major store, you walk on an angle for hundreds of feet, making all the cars crawl behind you, fighting the urge to hit the gas. The proper thing to do is cross at right angles. You don't have to jog or fake run or anything. Just walk straight across the crosswalk, hang a left or right, and cross again. This is the difference between an angle angel and an angle asshole. <laughs> I'm not gonna get into slow people in the fast lane, rolling roadblocks, people going all the way to the last inch before merging into the lane closure, or the entitled people who cut the corner so much when making a left they cause others to slam on their brakes and land in a drainage ditch. You know who you are. I know we all do many unsavory things in our cars. I once saw a guy shaving while driving, and I mean shaving with cream and a hand razor. I saw a guy driving a box truck while playing the violin, and I saw a van full of nuns flip off the UPS driver. But when it comes to the wet spot, I draw the line. Stop buying new coffee, then sitting in your car before opening the door and dumping out 40 ounces of old coffee right next to the parking space, because moments later I pull in, open the door, and I step right in your wet spot. It's not a good way to start the day. I hope I've taught you all something tonight. I trust you will look around your surroundings to make sure you're not hindering me. Stop rubbernecking at traffic accidents. Don't practice road rage. And for God's sake, use your damn turn signal, morons. It really should be a raffle for driving lessons. That's right. Uh, yeah, that's that's how you end Ignite Carol uh, 12. So uh, <laughs> Neil, always with a phenomenal uh, presentation. Um, 